Here comes uh, Tom Diggs, a man who is a diehard Steelers fan. Let's assume this is a quarterback question. God damn it, I hate to be that predictable. Uh, Bucky, were the quarterbacks <laughs> at the Combine? Like, did they, when they say this isn't a good quarterback class and, and things that you saw at the Combine or on tape or whatever, are they not as good as, as people are making them out to be? You know, I don't know. Like, my, my original thought was when I was at the combine, I was like, man, this is a good group. They threw the ball well. They ran fast. Desmond Ritter stood out. Malik Willis can throw it a ton. Even Kenny Pickett with his small hands threw the ball well. But then we leave the combine. I get on one Monday, and all we've seen all week are quarterbacks, either being signed, being traded, moving around. And so my feeling is that something must have spooked the evaluators around the league where they felt like we need to go and get – a veteran quarterback. We need to go and get these guys right now because I don't know if we're ready to play with a young quarterback based on what we saw at the combine. You mentioned Desmond Ritter. Is he one of those guys that maybe not a whole lot of people are talking about, but he could get in the league and, and surprise some people? I think so. I think Desmond Ritter, his play might remind me a little bit of what Dak Prescott's play was. I don't think he'll be drafted in the fourth round. I think he'll certainly go before that. But when you look at Desmond Ritter, he has 44 career wins. He is super athletic. He ran 4.52. Some clocked him into 4.4s. Four um, this is a guy that is super athletic. He has great intangibles. And then when you watch him throw it, he's a very solid passer. I think with his maturity, if he's drafted later by a team that is good, I think you can drop him in and he could have success right away. That game experience really matters because – with experience, can come expertise. I think he and Kenny Pickett played a ton of games. I think that helps them kind of jump into the league, maybe have more success than people give them credit for based on how everyone is viewing this class. Bucky, how do they find out if a guy's a dog or not? You know, like Desmond Ritter played a bunch of games, won a lot of games, but who knows what's going to happen with him in the NFL. Same with Kenny, same with Malik. I think we all know the good quarterbacks in the NFL, those who kind of separate themselves and go on. Like saying he's like Dak Prescott, maybe physically, maybe his background, but Dak's a dog. You know, like he, mm -hmm. I'm not just saying that because of his college, but he, how do you think you find that out? And can you see that when you're watching guys work out or compete at the college? Combine, you think that's a much longer process? Uh, I think what you have to do is I think you have to be very extensive in the way that you research it. I think it has to be a series of conversations that you have with people that are in the football department, but the people that are also around town. Uh, I think it's just really important that you try and get a full profile on the player that you're bringing into the building. And look, if you talk to enough people, the people will tell you the truth on a player. You can tell if somebody is extremely competitive. You can tell if someone really connects. I think what you're going to have, particularly coming off Joe Burrow leading the Cincinnati Bengals to the Super Bowl, everyone is looking for someone who has that it factor like a Joe Burrow, someone who can connect with all corners of the locker room. And when they play, they don't blink. I think the best quality that Joe Burrow has is that he connects with everybody. And when he got the stuffing knocked absolutely out of him by the Tennessee Titans, I never saw him wince. I never saw him kind of bow his head. I never saw him blame his teammates. That's the kind of dog mentality that you want your best players to have. And if they have that, they're going to have that all the way. And so you just try and do as much research as you can about them. But guys that love football and are competitive, Everyone around you lets them know that those guys are built like that. Man, you cannot get – that's a great answer. You cannot get caught paying a guy that does not uh -huh. in some of those positions. You know, like there's guys that play in the NFL that do not love the game. They are there strictly for business reasons. And by the way, whatever your motive is, go and get it. You know, even if you only love money, the better you play, the more money you're going to get. So who cares? But at those key positions, the ones where they have to be, you know, more studied than the opponent, they have to be in the – like that – those positions you need to find – a guy that absolutely loves the misery of preparing for every single game. I'm excited to find out who is and who isn't. Because all these guys, not all these guys, a large percentage of these dudes we see at the Combine end up being nothing, Buck. It, it, like, literally nothing. It's like, oh, this is the last time we saw this fucking guy. <laughs> he was jumping incredibly, and then the NFL, he's a CFL or something like that. It's all mentality, I think, Bucky. I might be wrong. Go ahead, Ty. Bucky, you mentioned the GMs getting spooked with some of the guys at the draft, but do you still think it'll be a situation on draft night where some of these teams who are left at, like, are we still going to see four quarterbacks go in the top 20, do you think? Or is because... You know, the, the draft is so deep at receiver and, and tackle and O-line and D-end. Do you think that's not going to happen? I think, I think three is the magic number. Uh, I'm not convinced which three, but I think three will go in the first round. 
part of the reason three will go is because the fifth year option, uh, the reason you get the extra year uh, when you take a first round pick, much like we saw with Lamar Jackson at the very end of the draft, I think that could play into it. But yeah, nah, it's, it's, it's a situation where when you look around the league, particularly in the AFC, if you do not have a high level quarterback, you have no chance. And I think that is what's becoming increasingly clear. You better have a superstar at the quarterback position. The days of thinking that maybe you can get away with a game manager, I think those are gone by the no. wayside because it's so, Bucky, it's so hard. Give us a it's game so manager hard. in Indianapolis, Bucky. <laughs> give so us hard. a game manager now. It's so hard. It's so hard to do. It can do it, but the rest of your – it just cuts your margin for error down significantly. But as you speak about, like, Indianapolis and a situation like that, your dude not only has to be a superstar, but he has to connect. I think that's the thing. He has to connect with his teammates. I love quarterbacks, and I understand quarterbacks are given diva privileges, but they still have to be able to kind of be the common man in the locker room. It is just really hard if you don't have that guy that everyone is like, Is okay, that what you're hearing? Guy. Is I'm that what it. you're hearing about Carson, by the way? It feels like that's a narrative that's kind of getting painted out there. And I'm I'm reading it. I, in Hard Knocks, it was interesting. I never really saw him with anybody else in Hard Knocks. So I was trying to kind of learn about him. But it's also COVID year and everything like that. Mm. Is that what you're hearing? His leadership style is just vastly different than what they expected it to be? Yeah, I think so. That's the only way, man. Look, you have two teams that advocated for you. The Philadelphia Eagles had every reason to make sure that you were successful. They paid him a bunch of money, and they moved on for Jalen Hurts. And one of the reasons is because Jalen Hurts' connectivity with that young faction in the locker room really mattered. Well, then you go to Indianapolis, and you drop him in. And, man, there were, like, conversations about this, like, in the middle of the year that they were going to move on. And you couldn't understand. You're like, ah, oh, they're just talking. And so there has to be something to it. And I don't know what because I'm not in that locker room, but there's some kind of disconnect between Carson and either the teammates and the coaches. And it's one of those things that he has to resolve because I don't want to say this is last chance you going to the Washington Commanders, but now he's, he's kind of naked because he doesn't have an advocate in the building. And so he has to figure out how to be a better player and leader to be that franchise quarterback that many want him to be.